Now the Range Rover in its newest generation has become larger, pricier and more opulent. Which means that the Range Rover Sport now also in its newest third generation really gets the chance to become that driver focused, that more manageable and more approachable version of the Range Rover experience. So today we have that car here with us to see if that really holds true. So we've already given you a good look at the Range Rover Sport standing still. So today, let's just get right down to driving it. Now once you start driving, you realize that again, it's still completely a Range Rover, just with the view out that you get. You sit not quite as high, and not quite as, you know, throne-like a position as in the regular Range Rover. It's a bit more compact, a bit more cocoon, but still quite high up. You have that long bonnet flowing out in front of you. You can see the edges more or less. This low sill, again these armrests. So yeah, it's an out and out Range Rover. The Range Rover Sport can be had with two 3.0-litre inline six mild hybrid engine options. The D350 diesel is more widely available with its 350 PS and 700 Newton meter. Although the version you see here is the P400 petrol with its slightly more enthusiastic bent, putting out 400 PS and 550 Nm. The ZF 8-speed pairs with both and you get air suspension, adaptive dampers and a locking central differential. Of course, it's a Range Rover, so there's 4x4 and the Terrain Response 2 system, although we couldn't really test it out on this occasion. Now, as for the way this P400 6-cylinder performs, with 400 PS, of course, performance is not lacking, but given the sheer mass of the Range Rover Sport, this SUV is quick, if not outrightly fast. But that's not a problem in traffic, where if you leave it in the comfort mode, there's performance throughout. The engine is very quiet, very silent. And say past 3000 RPM, there's quite, if you can hear it, quite a nice roar to it. A lot of it is piped in, but it's there. So it really does add to that experience. So moving along in traffic is really not an issue at all. And the ZF, unlike in some say German SUVs, here it's tuned a bit more softly, but again, it's not at the cost of, you know, how attentive it is. So it's always giving you that shift whenever you need it. It's just that it's doing it a touch softly. With the 35% stiffer MLA Flex architecture, the new Range Rover Sport is already quite a bit ahead of the SUV it replaces in terms of dynamic ability. This can be enhanced further with the Stormer handling pack which adds rear wheel steer, torque vectoring and anti-roll functions. There's also quite an eventful launch control function. It's easy to engage and will have the sport straining against the brakes and squatting the rear springs before shooting off. Although we couldn't quite get near the 5.7 second 0 to 100 claim time, again possibly due to these all-season tyres. Now these massive 22 inch wheels look great but going a size or two smaller should be best for our conditions. The Range Rover Sport can chop and thud over our uneven city roads but it must be said that the impacts are quite well done for such a large sized wheel. Either way this fades away quickly as speeds rise and with the significant suspension travel from the air springs you don't really need to tiptoe over rough patches too. Now quite a significant change is how much of a better handler the Range Rover Sport has become. So yeah, it can't obviously hide its massive mass and the fact that it's a big tall SUV. But within those parameters, within what you expect of a Range Rover, things have moved on quite a bit. So for example, on this tight bit of road, you can still find the rhythm like the way we are moving along. It'll flow along briskly, it'll change direction without, you know, too much drama. Of course, these all-season tyres hamper it a bit but if you drive normally like any other person, these shouldn't be a problem. So what you get is a big SUV that feels confident on the move, that feels, you know, engaging almost. And yeah, that's largely because the air suspension, it's doing a really good job. It tightens things up from how it is in comfort, so it isn't rolling around as much. And what you get is that control, but without too much of an effect on ride quality. So the ride quality remains more or less the same but you have this nice sense of control. The steering weighs up a bit. It's already quite well-weighted throughout all the modes. So yeah, the Range Rover Sport 
you can hustle it along if you really feel like it, if you really want to. Now you expect a Range Rover to be inviting and the Sport does not disappoint to that end. And it starts right from the beginning with the soft closed doors, with those flush door handles. And then when you're seated inside, you realize that the seats bring themselves up to the position that you left them in. Same for the steering wheel. And it goes further than that. The massaging function will come back on if you want it to. Same for the seat heating or cooling, which is a rare occurrence, but really sort of gives you that sense of luxury. Yes, some of the features, for example, the auto hold and the start stop are buried deep in sub menu. Same for these vent controls. But that's not really a bother because you realize that those functions, you use them maybe once or twice when you've just started using the car and then you just leave them as they are. The interiors carry on with the generally minimalistic theme of the Range Rover Sport. So you have quite a tasteful cabin trimmed in top-notch materials, especially if you spec this optional leather package. Although in terms of outright build quality, maybe the Germans still have a slight edge. The 13.1 inch touchscreen, the 13.7 inch driver's display with the head-up display and the rear camera also mean that a lot of information is available to you quickly and crisply. Now if you bought yourself a Range Rover Sport, invariably you will spend a lot of time here in the back seat. And again with this new generation, there have been quite a few improvements in this regard too. For example, the wheelbase is now 74mm longer. In fact, the Range Rover Sport and the standard Range Rover now share the same wheelbase and very similar amounts of rear seating space. So what you get is a lot of knee room and leg room as you can see with this seat pushed all the way forward. The seats themselves, they're wide and that soft but firm cushioning that you saw in the front seat that's here as well. And then you also get quite a few amenities. To start with, you get this reclining function, goes down to quite a comfortable angle. And then you can also option a lot of other things, apart from the sunroof, that's always there. The Range Rover Sport also makes an immediate impression with the way it looks. So you have these slim elements, barely a crease and a taut, almost sci-fi look to this large SUV. With prices starting from Rs 1.64 crore, the Range Rover Sport costs quite a bit less than the full-size Rangey. In that sense, it comes quite close to offering a good glimpse of the Range Rover experience at a more approachable price point. It's not the best handling SUV at this price, but it has that same sense of luxury and gravitas that you expect from a Range Rover. Pair that with decent dynamics, competent performance and about as much tech as you would need. Mm.